Welcome to this video on Graphene, the miracle material. On this channel Synergy Files, we aim to inspire budding engineers and technicians for a better, more sustainable world. The presence of laminate structures in certain carbon-based compounds was known as early as the 19th century. The extraction of these structures in a cost-effective manner has since remained a challenge. It wasn't till 2004 that two scientists in the University of Manchester were able to isolate a single layer thick crystallite from bulk graphite. This two-dimensional single layer of crystalline carbon became known as graphene. Graphene can be shaped into different allotropes, most notable of which is the nanotube. So why should engineers learn about graphene? Well. Graphene was dubbed as the best thing that happened in the world of material science when it was separated cost-effectively about 10 years ago. Its two-dimensional structure and strong lattice gave it properties unlike any other material known to man. Interestingly, the discovery of graphene coincided with the end of Moore's Law era which stated that computing speeds of computer processors will double every 18 months. The reason why the increase in computational speeds has declined is because the operating limits of the material that make up the processes have been reached. With the discovery of graphene, Moore's law has reason to be upheld again. Graphene has opened up new vistas in many areas of technology, not just in electronics. If we are able to mass produce the material, bigger structures can be built, larger and more efficient vehicles can be developed and many chemical processes can be expedited. In this video, 10 uses of graphene in engineering will be discussed. Some of these applications are already developed while others are undergoing research. Application number one is stealth technology. By combining the biomolecule reflectin, a protein that is found in Hawaiian squids, and graphene, scientists have developed a film that can change the way light is reflected. The change in reflectivity can be instigated by a chemical signal. Tests have shown that orange looking surface can blend into green foliage when coating is activated. Nanoflight, an Israeli company, is already claiming to have a coating that will make objects nearly impossible to detect. Work on stealth technology using nanomaterial is also underway in Germany, USA and India. The second important application is water filtration. Fresh water for human consumption is getting scarce. Furthermore, the availability of fresh water is compounded by the uneven distribution of resources. Although desalination process has been traditionally used where salt water is available, but it is an energy intensive process. Using graphene as a filter can help in tackling this problem. Fortunately, Work is being done in the academia, such as MIT, and the industry, like Lockheed Martin, for looking into the use of graphene as a filter that would allow water molecules to pass through, but block salt molecules. The MIT professor Jeffrey Grossman has said that the key to achieving filtration is controlling the size of the gap in the graphene sheets. The results have been promising and scientists are pleasantly surprised by the simulation studies. When this technology is realized, it could produce fresh drinking water from salt water for a fraction of the energy used in reverse osmosis or other desalination techniques. Application number 3 is solar cells. It is well known fact that energy up to 1100 watts per meter square can be received through sunlight. Currently, not much of this sunlight can be converted into electricity. Even if the photons with the ideal band gap are fully utilized, the conversion efficiency peaks at 33.7% known as the Shockley-Kaiser limit. Although scientists have been able to bypass this limitation by using three layers of solar cells on top of each other, such as in multi-junction solar cells, but the result has been a product that is not economically viable for a domestic user. The other factor that lowers the conversion limit is the presence of charge carriers or mesh wires that have to be placed on top of the solar cells. They prevent the light to pass through them, thus a portion of light is lost in absorption by copper or aluminium wires on the front of the panel. What makes graphene ideal for the use in solar cells 
is its electrical conductivity and optical transparency. Graphene material can be used as the charge carrying matrix that is placed on top of the solar cells. It has been reported that graphene based solar cells have already achieved efficiency of 15.6% which is very high for flexible solar cells. Application number 4 is electronics. Graphene is already being used commercially in the electronics industry. At the start of 2014, it was reported that the global market for graphene has reached $9 million. The sales were mostly in the semiconductor business and in other electronic components. Graphene, because of its high conduction and transparency, is ideal for optical electronics and therefore can be used in touch screen applications. IBM was able to produce a working transistor with graphene in 2010 and it has been reported that this graphene transistor works at twice the speed of normal silicon based transistor. Application number 5 is the use of graphene as a lubricant. The ideal properties of a lubricant are its environmental insensitivity and high durability and also the ease of occupying space between two rough interfaces. One of the biggest disadvantage of solid lubricants has been the wear and subsequent depreciation. Graphene due to its high strength and atomically smooth structure is able to deal with shear forces much better than other solids. Secondly, graphene has been shown to be impermeable to liquids and gases such as water or oxygen, thus slowing down the corrosive and oxidative process that usually causes more damage to the rubbing surfaces. It has been shown to reduce wear not only in its use directly as a lubricant but also as an additive to oils, composite materials and solvents. Application number 6 is structural engineering. Graphene is the strongest material ever tested. It has a Young's modulus of 1 TPA and a tensile strength of 130 GPA. This implies that extremely small amount of graphene material can take a load of not only several thousand but several million times its own weight. It is 200 times stronger than structural steel. Unfortunately, the small scale of graphene is prohibiting its use in large structural components. However, just like composites that have made their way in aerospace and automotive applications, graphene-based materials are poised to do the same. Graphene, when used as a matrix with other materials, can produce even lighter and more robust materials than carbon fiber composites. Research at the MIT has shown that graphene polymer composites would be ideal for making lightweight gasoline tanks and plastic containers that keep food fresh for weeks. The seventh application on the list is batteries. One of the biggest problems that has plagued the battery technology is energy density. The arrival of lithium-ion batteries to an extent has addressed the energy storage issue, but their use on a utility scale has still not taken off. There is an inherent problem in the battery design. If more power needs to be drawn, the battery needs to have more charge carrying channels which reduces the space for charge storage. This is analogous to a passenger aircraft where increasing the number of aisles and doors would allow the passengers to board and alight faster but on the other hand it will reduce the passenger carrying capacity of the aircraft. As graphene is the most conductive material known to man, its use as a charge carrier will occupy less room compared to other materials. This will allow more space for charge storage in the battery. Thus with the use of graphene, high power batteries can also be high energy batteries. Application number 8 is Thermal Management. It has been ascertained that graphene as a conductor of heat outperforms all the other conductors. Its conductivity under certain conditions can reach 2500 watt per meter square Kelvin compared to copper which has a conductivity of only 400 watt per meter square per Kelvin. It can therefore be used as a heat spreader particularly in electronics. Processors tend to generate a lot of heat and their performance degrades with temperature. There are several devices that have been used to wick heat from processors. Most common apparatus is the use of blowers with heatsink. However, it is the transfer of heat from the processor to the heatsink that can prove to be the bottleneck. 
Graphene's use as a thermal interface material can eliminate this bottleneck. Furthermore, it has also been shown that graphene filings inside a normal coolant improves the heat transfer capability of the coolant. Application number 9 is contaminant removal. Graphene can remove many substances such as cobalt, copper, arsenate, cadmium and organic solvents from water and other liquids. Graphene oxide can successfully remove various contaminants by a sweeping flocculation effect. Graphene-based materials are being considered as sorbents for environmental decontamination, the most prominent use of which will be the removal of radioactive nucleides from seawater. It should be noted that one of the worst legacies of nuclear energy used is the contamination of both land and sea. Concerns were raised after Fukushima disaster in 2010 on adverse environmental effect of nuclear leakage on the western seaboard of USA which is over 3000 miles away. When used as a sorbent, it helps in coagulating radionuclides. An example of this was an experiment where simulated radioactive liquid was used and graphene oxide was introduced. Coagulation occurred almost instantaneously because of graphene's high sorption affinity for radionuclides. Application number 10 is sensory aid in prosthetic limbs. In prosthetic limbs, due to the absence of nerve cells, the sensation of touch is lost. One of the possible solutions that scientists are looking into is the use of layers of graphene on the outer surface, dubbed as the e-skin or artificial skin. Normal pressure sensors operate on a range which is at a low pressure. At higher pressures, the sensitivity of the normal pressure sensors is lost. Graphene-based pressure sensors operate over a wide range of pressures. They can therefore be used for gentle touch as well as hard grab. Graphene-based artificial skin is able to generate variation in electrical signals which are then transmitted to nerve cells. The tests conducted on mice have already proven the functionality of graphene-based artificial skin and extension to human trials is underway. And with this, the video on 10 different applications of graphene is concluded. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful and informative, do give us a thumbs up. Comment for any questions you may want to ask or any ideas that you may want to share. Subscribe to the channel to get notifications of all our updates. Thank you for your time and attention.